The world is changing rapidly. Wars and rumors of wars are abundant. Civil unrest, economic collapse, a global economic reset, natural disasters, and the second coming of Jesus Christ is on the horizon. Are you prepared? Welcome to Truth Fed. Greetings and welcome back to Truth Fed. I am your host, Sean, and today is Monday, January 26th, 2015. And uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be reading a prophecy out of the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel, and then we're going to be talking a little bit about it and uh, showing some signs of the times. You know, one of the awesome things about the God of the Bible um, and that just shows that he is who he says he is and uh, shows that the word of God is the true word is uh, the ability of the word of God to predict the future with great 100% accuracy. Uh, now, sometimes we make mistakes in our interpretations, but uh, when it all comes to pass, we realize just how right on the money it was. And uh, we're going to be reading out of Ezekiel. And while this prophecy hasn't come to pass, uh, we can see all the signs leading up and uh, the pieces coming together to make it possible. And uh, the reality is, folks, is that the Gog and Magog war and the attack on Israel, I think, is on the horizon. Um, an even bigger uh, world war is at our doorsteps. And, um, you know, I pity the people, uh, and my heart breaks for the people who reject the word of the watchmen who've been screaming and shouting and warning about this for so long. And, uh, you know, some people say, well, why is, uh, you know, these, this has been, people have been warning about this for years and it's not come to, listen, the reason why is because God is patient and merciful and he warns his people, especially nations that are filled with his people, uh, before he brings destruction. And uh, that destruction's at the doorstep now. Uh, these things that you've been warned about are here. They're, they're happening. They, it, it, there isn't really any time left. And uh, so if you've been teeter-tottering on the fence, you need to get your life right with Jesus. And uh, you need to do that today. Uh, delay no longer. Get on your knees, repent of your sins, and uh, receive God's mercy. Uh, because the world is unraveling, folks. And uh, it's no longer a thing, it's, you know, I've said this several times, it's no longer a warning uh, that you need to heed later on down the road. The time is now. The time is now. And um, anyway, I wanted to, today, I wanted to read Ezekiel uh, 38 through 39, which is this prophecy about the Gog and its allies attacking Israel and what's going to happen. And this uh, read some headlines that uh, might indicate uh, that that might be in the near future. Also, just a quick note, and uh, honestly, I thought about not even mentioning this, but I'm just going to go ahead and anyway. There's a big five football field size massive asteroid uh, passing by Earth today. Uh, the reason why I wasn't going to mention that is because about the time that this podcast is going to be loaded and available is about the time that it'll be passing by, 11.52 p.m. Eastern Time, um, or uh, 11.07 uh, well, between 11.07 and 11.52 Eastern Time, so, uh, and it's 11.03 as I'm recording this right now, so, you know, that's why I didn't, wasn't thinking about bringing that up, but I thought I would just go ahead anyway. Um, they're saying that it's, you know, it's, it's, it'll be visible with binoculars, but not close enough to do any damage. If you remember, there was a similar situation, I believe a year or two ago, uh, but a piece of it broke off that they didn't see. Uh, and it exploded over Russia, damaging buildings, breaking out windows, injuring some people. Um, luckily, it didn't land right in the middle of uh, a populated city and, and kill a bunch of people. Uh, but as we know, and of course, this thing says, well, this, you know, this, there won't be another one passing by like this till 2027. Uh, but we know that in the last days, the Earth is, uh, there's going to be all kinds of natural things, including asteroids plumbing into the Earth. Uh, so. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting, and uh, so I just thought I'd bring it up, and hopefully I'll get this podcast up in time uh, for you maybe to try to go get a glimpse of it. 
Um, or who knows, maybe a chunk of it's going to come plummeting into the earth like so many prophecies have predicted uh, would happen in the month of January. Um, but without further ado, I just want to dig right in and get right into this. You know, I pray that this word goes forth and that it accomplishes something in your heart. Uh, you know, I pray that it pierces your heart and that you see the truth and that you're convicted and that you will fall on your knees before the living God. And uh, after I'm done with this, I've got a few other things to share for you, share with you. Uh, and then we'll wrap it up for the day. So without further ado, let's dig in and read Ezekiel 38 through 39. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaws and lead you out with all your army, horses, and horsemen, all splendidly clothed in a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them, and all of them with shield and helmet, Nomer and its troops, the house of Togomorah, from the far north, and all is truth. Many people are with you. Prepare yourselves and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the later days you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited, and against the people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods and who dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, and all the young lions will say to you, Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold? to take away livestock and goods, to take plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many people with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the later days that I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me when I am hollowed in you. O Gog, before their eyes, thus says the Lord God, Are you he of whom I have spoken in former days by my service the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them? And it will come to pass at that same time when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in my fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea and the birds of the heaven and the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all the men who are in the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountain shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all of my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And you, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, 
and I will turn you around and lead you on, bring you up from the far north, and bring you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will knock the bow out of your left hand and cause the arrow to fall out of your right hand. You shall fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and all your troops and the peoples who are with you. I will give you the birds of prey of every sort and to the beasts of the fields to be devoured. You shall fall upon, upon the open field. For I have spoken, says the Lord God, and I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in security in the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. So I'll make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. Then those who dwell in the city of Israel will go out and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers and the bows and arrows, the javelins and the spears, and they will make fires with them for seven years. They will not take wood from the field nor cut it down, any from the forest, because they will make fires with weapons. And they will plunder those who plundered them and pillage those who pillaged them, says the Lord God. It will come to pass in that day that I will give Gog a burial place there in Israel the valley of those who pass by the east of the sea, and it will obstruct travelers because there they will bury Gog and all his multitude. Therefore they will call it the valley of Haman Gog. For seven months the house of Israel will bury them in order to cleanse the land. Indeed, all of the people of the land will be burying, and they will gain renown for it. And on the day that I am glorified, says the Lord God, they will set apart men regularly employed with the help in the search party to pass through the land and bury the bodies remaining on the ground in order to cleanse it. At the end of the seven months, they will make a search. The search party will pass through the land, and when anyone sees a man's bone, he shall set up a marker by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman, Gog. The name of the city will also be Hamanah. Thus, they shall cleanse the land. And as for you, son of man, thus says the Lord God, speak to every sort of bird and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come, gather together from all sides to my sacrificial meal, which I am sacrificing for you, a great sacrificial meal on the mountain of Israel, that you may eat the flesh and drink the blood, and you shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of the rams and lambs and of goats and bulls and all of them fatlings and bashan. You shall eat the fat till you are full, and drink blood till you are drunk at my sacrificial meal, which I am sacrificing for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and riders, with mighty men, and with all the men of war, says the Lord God. I will set my glory among the nations, and all the nations shall see my judgment, which I have executed, and my hand, which I have laid on them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they were unfaithful to me. Therefore I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies, and they fell by the sword according to their uncleanliness, and according to their transgressions I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, now I will bring back the captives of Jacob and have mercy on the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name after they have borne their shame and their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me. When they dwelt safely in their own land, and no one made them afraid, when I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and I am hollowed in them in sight of many nations, then they shall know that I am the Lord God who sent them into captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land and left none of them captive any longer. And I will not hide my face from them any more, for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord God. All right, now there's a lot going on here, and uh, what I really want to focus in on is there's coming a time when these nations, it looks like five or six of them, are going to come and attack Israel. And uh, there's also this idea, which I'll talk about more in a minute, Uh, that God's going to draw them in, put hooks in their jaws and draw them in. Something else I wanted to focus on, um, let me see if I can get right back to where it was, is part of this prophecy that's already taken uh, taken place. And it says, After many days 
you will be visited. Actually, let's just start with verse 7. So this is, if you want to find it, Ezekiel 38, 7. Prepare yourselves and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be on guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought back out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You see, what we have here is this picture of Israel becoming a nation again. Um, at least that's what I'm seeing. Uh, you may disagree, but I believe that's what this is saying. After many days, you will be visited. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountain of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought back, brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You know that Israel is the only nation to ever cease to exist and then re-exist, like nearly 2,000 years later or 1,000 years later? That's never happened in recorded history. Yes, nations have been overthrown, but you've never had a nation like Israel disappear, not exist, and then suddenly re-exist again. Yet here it is prophesied. The Word of God says that this would happen, and it did. And the Jews are flocking back to Israel in great numbers. For the first time, there's actually more Jews living in Israel now than in America. I just think it's interesting how often the Bible says this will come to pass and then it does come to pass, yet people still scoff. People still scoff. Now let's talk about this Gog and Magog a little bit. I'm going to read some of this article that I found. I'm going to post this link uh, on my website. So if you go to truthfed.com, one of the news links will be the Gog and or one of the uh, featured stories will be the Gog and Magog War. So you can read a little bit of what I found. Ezekiel 38:39 reveals a fascinating and detailed prophecy about a future war campaign against Israel. This war is known as the Gog and Magog War, which most of us have heard this over and over and over. Because the people of Magog and their leader Gog will lead an attack, Scripture clearly teaches that this particular war will be a turning point for Israel with regard to the relationship with God. The sobering yet exciting aspect of this study is that for the first time since Ezekiel penned these prophecies, the countries that will gather against Israel have built an alliance in recent years. Just so you know, it is believed that Magog is modern-day Russia. So when people hear this Gog and Magog war, uh, what many scholars believe it's describing is Iran and Russia, along with some other uh, uh, smaller nations. Um, it, you know, it mentions Mishak and Tubal, which is which is part of the former Soviet states. It mentions Nomer, which is Eastern Europe. It, it mentions Togomora or Togarmra, um, if I'm pronouncing it right, which is Turkey. It mentions Kush and Put, which is Sudan and Libya. And uh, this article that I have is going to uh, show you a map. Uh, so you might want to come and take a look at this, and you can see Magog. Um, and it's just completely... When you look at what's going on in the headlines, you can see how this is starting to come together. Just in the headlines on January 20th, this is from theharzrit.com. And you've probably seen this all over the news, and many watchmen have been posting YouTube videos and things like that about that. But the title is, Russia and Iran Sign Military Cooperation Agreement. Russian Defense Minister Sergei uh, Shugo, on visit to Tehran, says common challenges and threats must be addressed. Iran and Russia have signed a military cooperation pact. The officials of TASS, Russian news agency, reported on Tuesday. The agreement of intensified military and technological operations was made during a Tehran meeting between Iranian defense minister uh, and Russian defense minister. So here we're seeing in the headlines, Iran and Russia coming together in a military alliance. Very interesting. 
especially when we look at some of these Bible prophecies. Let's also not forget that just in the headlines as of January 25th, Iran doubles down on threat to attack Israel. Um, and this article goes on to say, discussing the hook that I just mentioned. Uh, let me see if I can get to it without reading too much of the whole thing. Uh, Gog is the leader of a horde of Prince of Meshach and Tubal. Solid historical accounts point to Magog being Russia. This makes sense in light of, a, of Gog coming from the far north. Russia is the furthest country directly north of Israel. In the Hebrew, the Prince of Rosh is literally the chief, the chief prince, not the prince of a place called Rosh, as some scholars suggest. Um... Uh, let me get to that part that I really want to share with you. I should have highlighted it here. Note that Gog is the chief prince and not a king. This may suggest that Gog is not the supreme leader of Russia at the time of the invasion. In other words, the human leader being led by demonic spirit could be the prince, the prime minister of Russia at the time of war. This is because the prime minister is the office below the president who is second in command or chief prince. On the other hand, the title of chief prince could instead be related to a rank within the angelic realm under Satan, such as the prince of Persia who fought against the heavenly chief prince, the archangel Michael, which we read about in the book of Daniel chapter 10. Here's the hooks. Uh, on verse 4, 38, 4, I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your armies, horses, horsemen, all splendidly clothed in a great company with bucklers and shields and all of them handling swords. Putting hooks or a bit into the jaw of an animal is a way of making an animal, like a horse, move in a direction the rider desires. If the horse resists, the hooks in the jaw become painful, motivating the horse to follow the rider's lead. Similarly, someone whose hooks a sea creature in the jaw is able to control it. This means that Gog will reluctantly be persuaded to lead its conflict by God himself. In other words, circumstances will be such that Gog will have no choice but to follow God's will. For example, Russia may get pulled into the war to retaliate for an offense done by Israel to one of their allies. Now, I want you to think about this because you have this conflict. Uh, Israel has, is, has been in a panic for a long time about Iran and Iran getting nuclear weapons. As a matter of fact, we just saw this headline... Netanyahu, Iran deal dangerous for world will allow productions of dozens of nukes uh, right now. And Netanyahu has been complaining about this. And of course, now the U.S. says it'll be hard to trust him again. Uh, an article by the Times of Israel says not Netanyahu spat in our face. White House officials said, uh, and then it says PM will pay the price for spat over Congress of deaths. Obama said to have asked him to tone down his pro-sanction rhetoric. Um, the White House outraged over Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's plan to speak before Congress in March, a move he failed to coordinate with the administration, began to seep through the diplomatic cracks on Friday, with officials telling Harzat, the Israel leader, had spat in President Barack Obama. I mean, the whole world's coming against Israel, including the United States. Um, but l just for, you know, speculation's sake, what if Israel decides you've got Russia, who's now in a military uh, agreement, a military cooperation agreement with Iran. What if Israel were to preemptively attack Iran or attack in a response to some type of terror, then Russia, because of their agreement, would be obligated to come to Iran's aid. And that's kind of what this article is pointing at, uh, because it says that there'll be a hook put in their mouth and they'll be drawn into the battle. The, the more or less, God's going to bring them into the battle. Again, the article says this means that God will reluctantly be persuaded, reluctantly be persuaded to lead this conflict by God himself. In other words, circumstances will be such that God will have no choice but to follow God's will. For example, Russia may get pulled into the war to retaliate for an offense done by Israel or to one of their allies. So just a bunch of interesting things to think about. And, um, you know, when you, can, when you can go to the scriptures, especially prophecy, 
and you can start to put the pieces of the puzzle together and you can say, look at this and now look at the world. And there's, there's dozens of examples of this. I just thought this was one worth pointing out because it's happening right now. Also, you can point out, you can say, you know, here's where God says that Israel would be at one point desolate, uh, but then they would all, you know, they would, they would gather back to their land, which they have done. I mean, you can, you can show where the word of God dares to predict the future. And we're seeing that with the end times as they develop before our very eyes. I'm going to be posting a pretty powerful video on TruthFed as well, um, which will also be in that featured column. So make sure you check that out. It also talks a little, that particular video demonstrates a little bit of this Gog and Magog stuff. And the video is entitled, Warning, this video will shock you. Are you ready? 2015, biggest event. Um, you need to check that out. Uh, it's definitely worth a watch. It's only like 15 minutes or so. So that stuff will be posted up at truthfed.com. Um, you know, also, I, I, you know, I said at the beginning of the show, you know, the war, the world is on the brink of war, and it is so true. We, we just, I mean, we just spent the whole show talking about this Gog and Magog stuff. Um, we also see articles that I just saw today, January 26th, which says Putin draws a line in the sand as West major oil companies push for war. Folks, war is at the door, and you have to be completely blind and unwilling to take a look to not see that this is taking place. You see the collapse in oil. Folks, it's all, it's all leading to war. The SEALs are, are unleashing. They're, going, they're, they're unleashing, folks. I believe this year, financial collapse, world war, it's, it's happening. Which means we don't have much time. And you remember I, I said on the last episode, blessed are those when the master comes home finds them watching. Get your life right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Be on watch because he comes like a thief in the night and you don't know the hour that he's going to come. You need to be ready now. And it's going to be sad for those who refuse to listen. The Bible says, if you hear the watchman and ignore it, your blood is on your own hands. Pay attention, folks, and be ready. That's the show for today. I do want to ask uh, for your prayers uh, before I before I close. Um, this last year has been extremely challenging for me and my family, and uh, one of the things uh, that's been part of the challenge is loss of loved ones. And uh, my son, in particular, has had to deal with uh, two very close loved ones in his life that have passed away in the last couple of weeks. And some of it in very dramatic fashion. And um, I just ask you to pray for my family. Uh, there won't be a show tomorrow because I've got a funeral to go to. It's going to be a long, challenging day. Um, and I, you know, I just ask that you guys would be willing to pray. You know, some of you email me and uh, you say, you know, you apologize that you can't subscribe to Truth Fed. Let me just tell you, I, I don't care about that. I really don't. I, that's why I don't bring it up much on this show. If you really want to help me, what I really need is, is you to cover me and my family with prayer because being a watchman and doing this work and being on your knees a lot in prayer with God and interceding on the behalf of others and on behalf of your country, uh, you bring upon yourself a lot of spiritual battles and there's a, just a lot of warfare taking place in my life and in my family. And uh, I, if there's anything that I need more than money it is your prayer um so please you know it, i would i would feel a lot better going into tomorrow and going in uh to the to this just challenging week knowing that there are dozens of you out there praying for me um and uh interceding on my behalf i would really really appreciate that and like i said the you know the most valuable thing that you could do for me is just to pray that god would fill me with the holy spirit and that I would, you know, the words coming out of my mouth would not be my own because my own words, my own thoughts are corrupt by human flesh, but that would be God's words and the work of the Holy Spirit that would come out. Um, so without going into a lot of detail about what's happened uh, recently and over the last year, because I don't want to murmur, uh, I just ask that you remember me uh, in your prayers. And I thank all of you for the emails. 
Uh, again, I've chosen Wednesday as the day that I try to go through and respond to those. So if you've emailed me in the last few days, uh, your response will probably be coming uh, as of sometime on Wednesday. I'm also working on lining up some guests uh, to come and speak to you about things that actually matter. Not news headlines, but uh, things of God and to help to prepare your hearts as we go into these last days. That's the show for today. Um, A little bit different. Uh, I hope that you liked it. It was kind of last minute that I decided to talk about these things. So I apologize if it uh, wasn't very clean. Um, But, you know, sometimes I get back here and I've got a plan and then the plan changes because I feel led to do something else and to talk about something else. So hopefully uh, the work that was supposed to be accomplished was accomplished. That's it. Peace and grace be with you. God bless.